Let's take a look at a harder Hooke's Law problem. We have three springs, a 50 gram mass hanging from one, 250 gram mass hanging from the next, and a mystery mass from the third, and all three springs are identical. And the first thing we want to do is figure out where would the spring go if I took the weights off. And with the, it's the same spring, so they'd all go to the same place. And so to answer that, we are going to need to use Hooke's Law which you should remember, F equals KX. And so if we want to solve for X, we need to know the force. Well, that be, would be the weight. Either one of these would work. And K is the spring constant, which we don't have. And so how do you get the spring constant? Well, you might try solving Hooke's Law for the spring constant. And we know the force would be the weight but what would you put for x? We don't know how far the springs have been stretched. And so the, another way to think about the spring constant and Hooke's law is it comes from a graph of force versus distance. So if I stretch these springs out, I get a straight line if I graph the force required to stretch at different distances. And the spring constant, little k, is the slope of that line. And to get a slope, I don't need to know exact points. I just need to get the change between two points. And so the change in the force over the change in x is the slope. And so k, this is true, but that assumes we know where uh, two points are. And so if I write it out as a change in force, well, that would be the weight of the 250 gram mass, which would be 0.25 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram, minus the weight of the 50 gram, which is 0.05 kilograms times 9.8, divided by the change in x, which is how far the springs stretch from here to here. And so this would be the change in x. And we have a handy ruler over here that we can bring in and use. And so I'm going to measure it, everything from the bottom of the spring. And so if we go over from the bottom of this spring, it's at about 19 centimeters. And so the change in x is 19 centimeters and that would also be 0.19 meters and that's what I want here and so solving for K I get 10.3 newtons per meter we want newtons per meter if we're going to use this for energy because energy is in newtons and meters newton meters so you have to be careful with that so now that I know K I can go back to Hooke's law and solve it for X and so X would be F over K, and I can pick either mass now. I'm going to pick the 250 gram. You should try this with the 50 gram, see if you get the same results. And so X would be mg over K, and so that would be 0.25 times 9.8 over the spring constant we figured out. And so this turns out to be Newtons, and this is Newtons per meter. And so the Newtons cancel, you get 1 divided by 1 over meters, or you get x is 0.24 meters. So that means if I remove this mass, the spring is going to go up 24 centimeters. And so let's see if we can see where that's going to be. And so there would be 20, 1, 2, 3, Four measuring to the bottom of the spring. And I have this little dotted line we can use as a reference. And so I'm claiming if I take this weight off now, the spring will go up to where that dashed line is. And so here we go. Hey, that's pretty good. And you should try and see if you can do the same thing with the 50 gram and it will also work like that. Let's put them back. And so now we want to figure out the mystery mass. 
and we're all set to do that since we have the spring constant. So what is this mass? Well, we use Hooke's law again, but now we want to solve it for force. Well, it's already solved for force, right? F equals kx, and F is the weight. And so solving for the mass, we get kx over g. And so we go 10.3 times how much the mystery mass stretched from the unstretched position. So we needed to know where this dotted line was to be able to do this one. That's why we waited till the end. And so now if we measure it, where is the bottom of the spring? I got 15 and a half centimeters. And so that, whoops, didn't mean to move that. And so I got 15 and a half centimeters for how much it stretched. And so that would be um, 0.155 meters. So again, this distance here, 15.5 centimeters. And so x is 0.155 meters. So that's what needs to go here. And then g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And if you work that out, the newtons and the newtons cancel, so you end up with kilograms. And you get 0.16, which would also be 160 grams. So I have no other way to check this easily, but it sure makes sense. 160, it's in between the stretch of the 50 and the 250, and it's closer to the 250. That looks good. Uh, if you want to try another thing, this program, you can find by Googling uh, P-H-E-T for FET. That's the name of the people that make these things. And this simulation is called the Mass Spring Simulation. And what you might try doing, if you look over here at the controls, notice there's different levels of gravity. You might see if you can figure out what G is for planet X. And so if you turn uh, on planet X gravity, watch what happens. They're not stretched as much, so you know gravity's weaker there. And so see if you can use Hooke's Law, maybe even start from the beginning and see if you can figure out the spring constant yourself. Um, you would have to do that with Earth gravity. And then see if you can go back to here and solve for little g. I'm going to give you the answer, so pause this, do your work, and then come back to see what the answer is. Okay, did you uh, figure it out? The answer is uh, 3, I got 3.7 newtons per kilogram. And that's suspiciously close to what Mars is, so I think planet X over here is Mars. And so give that a try. Uh, if you can do one like this, you really uh, understand um, um, Hooke's Law.